Dear esteemed members, Chairperson Dr. Neela Gandhan, today's speaker, Dr. Sobalan, Dr. Shab Shundar, Senior Psychiatrist, uh, TNIPS Scientific Committee members, postgraduates, very good evening to all of you. First, I, first I appreciate the Scientific Committee of Tamil Nadu EPS for promptly organizing this Enrich webinar. On behalf of the TNIPS, the Enrich webinar is organized every month on second Tuesday. The main objective of this webinar is to provide an opportunity for a young psychiatrist to share. Uh, today we have a very excellent young speaker, uh, Dr. Siva Balan and Dr. Jayam Shundar. They are just going to speak about the family's perspective of schizophrenic patients and uh, also uh, the anti-craving agents, uh, mainly for the alcohol dependence syndrome. So both the speakers are going to speak. Uh, with a small introduction, I request our chairperson, Dr. Neelagantar sir, to take out the session. Yes, Dr. Neelagantar sir, please take out session. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you very much sir, for the kind words and uh, I first thank the, uh, our president and uh, all the uh, cabinet and uh, members of uh, Tamil Nadu IPS for giving me this opportunity. So the first topic is uh, Family and the patient for lifetime emotional, social, financial consequences they have experienced. Experience, uh, the patient, I recently gone through a patient journey project published in the AIMS in May 2023. It aims to collect all the real world experiences of patients in all the uh, areas um, of the illness, like the early, early, early uh, detection phase, acute phase, and the long term phase of the continued care phase. So, let us hear from none other than uh, the star speaker, uh, Dr. Seo Balan, sir whom we all admire. Uh, sir is, uh, sir graduated from uh, MD Psychiatry from Stanley Medical College and passed out with the uh, uh, Tamil Nadu Medical University gold medal uh, that year. And he has worked in all the primary institutions like SRM, Knowledge Medical College, and now currently he's professor and head of the, the Lalitamadike Medical College Hospital in Chennai. And uh, it's really an academic feast to hear from Dr. Seo Balan, sir. He has co-authored, uh, along with Professor Dr. Kiranakar, uh, sir, uh, in the books like Schizophrenia Today and uh, Mood Disorders Today, very useful compilation of all the uh, articles and uh, topics in schizophrenia and mood disorders, especially very useful for postgraduates and young psychiatrists. And the second topic is alcohol dependence, very challenging always for all of us practicing psychiatrists. So the role of anti-craving agents. Um, so it, we used to put them on anti-craving after a detoxification phase. So in the short term acute phase, we put them on anti-craving and as well as psychosocial interventions. Um, we all know about the combined study also. Um, and we are going to hear this from Dr. Shyam Sundar. Currently, uh, assistant professor at Sabita Medical College, and uh, he has graduated from uh, Nimans, Bangalore. He's MD. He has done senior residency also in uh, Nimans, and he has done his postdoctoral fellowship in addiction psychiatry at Nimans itself. And uh, currently, he's a practicing psychiatrist as well as a faculty at the Sabita Medical College. We're happy to invite both of you uh, with this uh, brief introduction. Uh, I'll invite Dr. Sobalan sir to start the talk. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> I think I am audible. Yes, sir. Very good. So, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the TNIPS for giving me this opportunity. Uh, especially uh, Dr. Pani Salam, sir, for organizing these kind of various academic activities in uh, regarding uh, the TNIPS. And I also thank the scientific committee for giving me this opportunity. And I also thank Dr. Neelagandan for brief introduction. Now regarding the topic, the schizophrenia patient and the family perspective. Uh, throughout our uh, the postgraduate uh, the training period, we always focus schizophrenia in more clinical point of view. Uh, regarding the etiological model, uh, regarding various classification system, uh, the phenomenological uh, the theories, and various treatment options. Likewise, we always 
see the schizophrenia in more clinical point of view. But in our routine, uh, the practice, the more than clinical point of view, we have to address the patient as well as the caregiver, uh, the burden regarding the having the schizophrenia. Uh, for example, as a physician, as a psychiatrist, what we understand as schizophrenia is completely different from what patient as well as the family member understand as a schizophrenia. So their expectation, their priorities, and their uh, the values is completely different from our preferences and our priorities. We always not considering all uh, the perspective of uh, the family, the patient, as well as the society perspective of uh, schizophrenia. We always focus on more clinical point of view. So where there will be a very huge uh, gap between the clinician as well as the patient as well as uh, the family members. So in this aspect, it is very essential for any budding psychiatrist to understand what the patient exactly need from the psychiatrist, from the clinician, as well as what family members need from the psychiatrist, need from the clinical uh, uh, the point of view. So in this aspect we have to work on, then only we can uh, treat the patient in a robust way and we can clarify all the concern and anxiety uh, regarding the schizophrenia. Then only we can assure the complaints. So in this aspect, this particular topic is essential, I, uh, I think. Pani Salam sir always used to say this particular point that the treatment gap for schizophrenia and other psychosis is more than 80 percent. That means that more than 80 percent of people with schizophrenia and other psychosis does not get adequate and appropriate treatment. Why there will be a very wide gap only in psychiatry, only as, especially in psychosis and schizophrenia. We always tend to blame the patient as well as the family member for the particular uh, the treatment gap because we say that it is because of stigma, it is because of some negative attitude about schizophrenia, it is because of lack of awareness about the mental illness. That is why the patient is not coming into the, the clinical attention. But when you blame only the patient as well as the family member for this treatment gap, then your understanding is not complete because even in a clinical setting, there are a lot of patients that are coming into the clinical setting, but they are not turned up again. Therapy is not So, one time, you can see doctor, you can see the doctor, you can see regular follow-up. So, it is not only about coming into the clinical attention, how regularly they are coming into the uh, clinical attention. So, if they are not coming regularly, for which we cannot only blame patient as well as the family member, what is our part? What are all the concerns of the patient as well as the family member that we are not addressing? That might be one of the main reason for this lack of follow-up. That might be one of the reason for this wide treatment gap that we have to understand. Nearly one third of patients feel their physician does not talk to them. So in most of the uh, the clinical setting that is very, very true in other the physical uh, medicine and other uh, non-psychiatric uh, branches. But even in psychiatry, the psychiatrists, the most of the time, they are not ready to talk about the medication. They are not ready to talk about the diagnosis. They are not ready to talk about uh, the prognosis. They are not ready to talk about other essential factors regarding the mental illness. So in that way, the patient are very much dissatisfied because their genuine concern, it is not properly addressed in the clinical settings. That is why we are not having uh, uh, the regular uh, follow-up like kind of things. So regarding our treatment model, so the recent Mental Health Care Act is 
uh, insisting us to go for uh, the shared decision making model. But what we are following is either the paternalistic model or shared decision making model. So in a paternalistic model, we, the treating physician, decides what patient wants, what patient needs. Likewise, we can go in a paternalistic model. But in a shared decision making model, we have to discuss with the various treatment option with the patient as well as the family member, then make them to decide what is the feasible and possible treatment option for them. They have to decide for them. So in a shared decision making model, what is very, very essential is we should have that particular awareness about this case of Pumia. We should have a particular awareness about mental illness and other things, right? If the patient or if the family member or if the society does not have any scientific awareness about the mental illness. So in this shared medical uh, the decision making model, it is having the limitation. So in what else we can discuss, right? Now, so for the past 10 or 20 years, there will be a more of anti-scientific campaign is running through the society, right? Vaccine for the vaccine for side effect on the wrong, English mother put the water get to play wrong, kidney get to play wrong. Likewise, there are so much of uh, the negative attitude about uh, uh, the evidence-based medicine. Role. So in that aspect, the patient is normally having some anxiety about having the medications. So in the psychiatric medication, especially for schizophrenia and psychosis, we are insisting for the long-term treatment. Definitely patient have so much of anxiety about these kind of adverse effects. So the patient having fear that when you matra kudukriyan, I edukra. So edukite or na na kidney damage ida da. Apo when you are go for shared decision making model, yes, these are all the second generation antipsychotics. This would produce this kind of metabolic syndrome. Idhna lo ungle diabetes orla, idhna lo ungle blood pressure orla, idhna lo cardiac illness orla, idhna lo weight gain orla. Likewise, when you explain definitely that they, they won't turn for the treatment option. so because there is lack of awareness idalla illa na maathriye polna kuda schizophrenia summa uttave in metabolic syndrome la varum weight gain la varum because of lifestyle and other thing they won't understand in those aspect because they are only particular about the medication maathranal enak edha vandra podu like way they are having such a anxiety so this is the limitation for shared decision making model in the developing countries especially in india so in a shared decision making model, there are three tasks. One is the choice task, another one is the option task, third one is the decision task. Choice na either soldra, whatever the options, Ningle only can options na either na irke, either in the pros, irke, these are all the cons about this treatment option. You have to make a decision. In a decision task, so we have to help the patient to decide the, uh, the medication. If you have a mobile phone, you can use the phone, 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 the So this is the decision task. So we have to help the patient to arrive at the, what the, uh, the more uh, the appropriate treatment option for them. Schizophrenia cannot be understood without understanding the despair. So most of the time, the despair means it is not only about uh, the underlying depression. It is not only uh, about uh, the various phenomenological point of view, schizophrenia level or obsession, schizophrenia level or suicidal ideas. This is not a despair. Having schizophrenia, having mental illness in a society, having very poor awareness about the mental illness itself is a despair. So, a schizophrenia, you can tell me, they won't get any rental. They won't get any rental. They won't get any So, likewise, there are negative attitude about the patient with schizophrenia. Right? So, this is produced a lot of despair. This is produced a lot of hopelessness about the society. So, without understanding this particular despair, we cannot understand this schizophrenia. So we try to understand schizophrenia in more phenomenological point of view, in a more clinical point of view. But in social point of view, to what extent does the therapeutic, the treating physician, understand about these, these social despair, what they are undergoing because of this schizophrenia. So without understanding these uh, despair, you cannot give the complete treatment for schizophrenia. 
So this is the three questions have to be answered. What patient expects, what patient needs, and what patient says. So this is three questions. It is remain unanswered most of the clinical settings. Naraya Narathala patient would expectation, it is my it is a completely undue expectation. So what patient needs? So what patient needs that has to be disclosed to the patient? But what are the essential or minimal things has to be satisfied? So what you need most that has to be explained? What patient says? So what patient says, we always take it in a more clinical point of view. This is a delusion, this is a hopelessness, this is a trust. So this is a hallucination. Likewise, in phenomenological point of view, we try to understand. So what patient says, we are not giving much importance. If patient says anything, we always link it into a delusion. For example, so we had one patient in our ward that female, uh, the schizophrenic patient, complained about the stopness that she is trying to sexually abuse me, uh, like that she had a, she uh, tell a complaint. So in that aspect, my chief, the Navarasa, told that if she is saying that, immediately you should conduct the inquiry. So without any other questions, Without we are linking this patient particular belief into a delusion, we are giving much importance to the what patient says. Naraya Nerathala, patient soldier, Yelahatim, a delusion or a link on it. This is not necessary. So, most of the time, they can come with the despair. Most of the time, they can come with a lot of suffering. So, these words is very much important in the clinical settings, more than the phenomenological point of view. This kind of real despair has to be evaluated in the clinical settings and has to be addressed properly. Then only the patient having trust towards you. Otherwise, when you try to link everything into a delusion, definitely there will be a lot of uh, problem. So one of the greatest source of pain reported by person is, is, of, is the loss of personal identity as a normal person. This is one of the main fear and anxiety of the patient is of me. Normal identity. Identity. So this is the very, very important genuine fear the schizophrenia patient is having. So that is why they are very much reluctant to taking the tablets. It is not only the side effect of the tablets. By taking these tablets, I have, so these tablets might have changed my personal identity. So, classical or patient or attendant, so likewise, they are having so much of anxiety. So, these are all the anxiety has to be addressed. 15% of psychiatrists would not use the term schizophrenia when giving the diagnosis, instead using other often confusing terminology. So, we are not disclosing the diagnosis of schizophrenia to the patient. For confusing terminology, Likewise, we try to not to disclose the diagnosis of schizophrenia. There are many uh, reasons for that. Because once you disclose the schizophrenia, then that is become a tagging for the person. So the patient identity is schizophrenic. So our patient is schizophrenic. Our patient is schizophrenic. We have a routine hospital. We have a schizophrenic. We have a bipolar. We have a OCD. Like that, their personal identity is, they are losing their personal identity. So that's why we are not making diagnosis. If you have a schizophrenia, we have to tell you. So that is the another fear of psychiatrist is having. So that is the other one. So we have to do it. We have to do it. We have to do it. So we have to do it for six months. We have to do it for one year. So likewise, we tend to minimize the, uh, the diagnosis. That should not be done. Why I need a medication? 
so for example if patient uh, is having hypertension so i am taking the medication that will go in my body and act and decrease my blood pressure level if i am taking tablet for uh, diabetes that will go in my body act on my body that will reduce the blood sugar நீங்க ஸ்கிசோஃபினியாக்குன்னு எனக்கு ஒரு மன நோய்க்குன்னு மாத்திரை போடுறீங்க ஆக்சுவலி இந்த மாத்திரை என் உடம்புல என்ன பண்ணுது வாட் எக்ஸாக்ட்லி திஸ் பர்டிகுலர் மெடிகேஷன் டூ இன் மை பாடி தட் இஸ் வெரி வெரி எசென்ஷியல் அண்ட் பேசிக் கொஸ்டின் பேஷண்ட் இஸ் ஆகும் ஸோ இதெல்லாம் போடுறதுனால நான் என்ன ஆவேன் ஸோ மோஸ்ட் ஆஃப் த டைம் வாட் தே திங்க் தே ஆர் டேக்கிங் மெடிகேஷன் பிகாஸ் தீஸ் மெடிகேஷன் ட்ரை டு காம் டவுன் தென் ஸோ என்னை தூங்க வைக்குது என்னை அமைதிப்படுத்துது என்னோட அக்ரஷனை குறைக்குது இவ்வளோதானே பண்ணுது அப்ப எனக்குள்ள ஒரு டிசீஸ் இருக்குன்னு சொல்றீங்க இல்லையா அந்த டிசீஸ் இது என்ன பண்ணுது ஸோ தீஸ் ஆர் தோ கொஸ்டின் இஸ் ரிமைன் அன்ஆன்சர்ட் லைக் லீகல் செட்டிங்ஸ் ஸோ வில் மெடிகேஷன் சேஞ்ச் மை பர்சனாலிட்டி நம்ம ஏற்கனவே பார்த்தோம் இந்த ஸ்டிக்மா அண்ட் டிஸ்கிரிமினேஷன் ஸோ மோஸ்ட் ஆஃப் அண்ட் வாட் வி திங்க் த பே த சொசைட்டி இஸ் ஹேவிங் ஸ்டிக்மா டுவர்ட்ஸ் தி மென்டல் இல்னஸ் த சொசைட்டி இஸ் ஹேவிங் ஸ்டிக்மா டுவர்ட்ஸ் ஸ்கீஸ் ஆஃப் இந்தியா பட் வாட் மை சீஃப் யூஸ் டு சே ஒரு மென்டல் இல்னஸ்க்கு ஸ்டிக்மா இருக்கிற ஒரு சொசைட்டியில் எப்படி ஒரு பெரிய கிராமத்துக்கு முன்னாடியே சாமி ஆடுவாங்க ஸோ ஒரு பேய் ஓட்டுறதெல்லாம் ஓட்டுறாங்க அதெல்லாம் தனியாக வீட்டுக்குள்ளேயே வச்சு ஓட்டுறான் எல்லாத்துக்கும் முன்னாடி தானே ஓட்டுறான் ஸோ இன் தோஸ் சுச்சுவேஷன் தே டு நாட் ஹவ் எனி ஸ்டிக்மா அதுவும் இன்னைக்கு ரீசெண்டாக இந்த சோசியல் மீடியா இறா மோஸ்ட் ஆஃப் தி யங்ஸ்டர்ஸ் கிளைம்ஸ் தட் ஐ ஆம் ஹேவிங் பர்சனல் தெரப்பிஸ்ட் ஸோ நான் ஒரு சைக்காலஜிஸ்ட்டை போகிறது ஸ்டிக்மா இல்லை எனக்கு ஒரு பர்சனல் தெரப்பிஸ்ட் இருக்கிறது ஸ்டிக்மா இல்லை ஸோ த ஸ்டிக்மா இட் இஸ் நாட் வித் தி மென்டல் இல்னஸ் த ஸ்டிக்மா இட் இஸ் நாட் வித் த பிகேவியர் இஷ்யூ அப்போ ஸ்டிக்மா எதுக்கு இருக்குன்னா ஸ்டிக்மா இட் இஸ் ஒன்லி வித் தி டேக்கிங் மெடிகேஷன் ஃபார் தி மென்டல் இல்னஸ் த ஸ்டிக்மா ஒன்லி வித் தி சைக்காட்ரிஸ்ட் நாட் வித் தி சைக்காலஜிஸ்ட் நாட் வித் தி ஆன்மீக குரு நாட் வித் தி ஆர்ட் ஆஃப் லிவிங் இது எல்லாத்துக்குமே ரொம்ப ஒரு லக்ஸூரியாக ஒரு எலைட்டாக போயிட்டுருக்கான் அதே மாதிரி பேய் ஓட்டுறதா இருந்தாலும் சரி சாமி ஆடுறதா இருந்தாலும் சரி அதுக்குமே அவனுக்கு ஸ்டிக்மா இல்லை இந்த ஸ்டிக்மா இஸ் ஒன்லி வித் தி சைக்காட்ரிஸ்ட் பிகாஸ் அண்ட் ஐ கோ டு த சைக்காட்ரிஸ்ட் தில் ஸ்டார்ட் அ ட்ரீட்மெண்ட் பை டேக்கிங் ட்ரீட்மெண்ட் ஃபார் மென்டல் இல்னஸ் ஒன்லி ஸ்டிக்மா அண்ட் டிஸ்கிரிமினேஷன் அதனால தான் என்ன பண்ணுறான் ஓரளவு சரியான வந்து உடனே ஸ்டாப் பண்ணிடுறான் இட் இஸ் நாட் அபவுட் சைட் எஃபெக்ட் it is not about poor drug companies it is not about other family and other support system it is because as long as they are taking medication they believe that i am having mental illness matra illa na mental illness sari aichu matra potu irukka na still enak mental illness irundukitte irukku na that is why i am not taking medication that is why most of the time patient they really they try to stop the medications so what are the family member perspective family response to having family members skills of india include care burden fear and embarrassment about the illness signs and symptoms uncertainty about course of the disease lack of social support and stigma the fear and embarrassment about the illness that is very very uh, important uh, the factor as far as the family members is uh, con- concerned because most of the time in social situation they only face all the stigma and discrimination not the patient patient won't bother about anything but yara or veetla vandu patient is kind of funny yara na definitely the family member has got so much of stigma so much of uh, discrimination avana endo or family function ku kuda matta endo or kalyanath ku kuda matta avanukku or veedu ku kuda matta avanukku or valaiyil vechikka matta so these are all the things the family members is under pressure so what primary caregiver expect what primary caregiver needs what primary caregiver says and who is the primary caregiver so these are all the question we have to give importance in our clinical settings nareya nerathile primary caregiver enna edirpaapanga so most of the time undue expectations irukla idu eppa sariyaagum idu yen sariyaagave mathu மாத்திரை நிப்பாட்னா திருப்பி பழையபடி தான் ஆகலாம் அப்போ இவ்வளோ நாள் மாத்திரை போட்டு எதுவுமே இம்ப்ரூவ்மெண்ட்டே இல்லையா ஸோ தீஸ் நாள் த கொஸ்டின்ஸ் தேர் ஆகு ஸோ உடனடியாக என்ன பண்ணுறோம் வி டென் டு பிளேம் தி ஃபேமிலி மெம்பர் ஆர் வி டென் டு பிளேம் தி கேர் மெம்பர் தட் யூ டூ நாட் ஹவ் எனி பேசிக் அவேர்னஸ் அபவுட் த இல்னஸ் ஸோ ரைட் வி டூ நாட் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் வாட் இஸ் தேர் கன்சர்ன் வி டூ நாட் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் வாட் இஸ் தேர் ஃபியர் வி டூ நாட் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் வாட் தேர் ரியல் எக்ஸ்பெக்டேஷன் ஸோ லைக் வைஸ் வி ஹேவ் டு ஆன்சர் ஆல் தோஸ் திங்ஸ் who is the primary caregiver is more important question to ask because 
if the primary caregiver is a parent then there will be a lot of support if the primary caregiver is a spouse definitely there will be a lot of challenges in those cases so these are all the uh, the main uh, the factors with the family member they are having so much of denial linking with some other reason sir where either if i tend to fail i am not be i am am wife put it poitanga adanal ipdi i am so likewise they tend to blame with the some other reason they won't accept they are having fear they are having undue expectations so these are all the things the family members always is having so what we have to do in those aspect you have to disclose the diagnosis first once you are very much certain about the schizophrenia immediately you have to disclose the diagnosis to the family member speak scientifically so in a kind of scientific situations la what is schizophrenia what about the course of illness what are all the the response we are expecting from the treatment what are the various treatment options is available what about the fun so everything you have to speak in a more scientific way your personal bias it should not come when you discuss about all those things you have to tell the facts tell about the need for the medications what might expect from the medication don't give any false hope ஆறு மாசத்துல சரியாகிடும் ஒரு வருஷத்துலயே பழையபடி மாறிடுவான் பாருங்க லைக் வைஸ் இட் சுட் நாட் எனிஸ் ஹோப் சோ தர் ஆர் மெனி ஹார்ட்ஷிப் தீவர்ஸ் நாட் கோயிங் மச் சோ தி பேர்டன் ஆஃப் த கேர் கிவர் டிவைடட் இன் டூ ஒன் இஸ் தி சப்ஜெக்டிவ் பேர்டன் அனதர் ஒன் இஸ் தி அப்ஜெக்டிவ் பேர்டன் அப்ஜெக்டிவ் பேர்டன் யூ நோ வெரி வெல் தட் தர் ஆர் சோ மச் ஆஃப் பினான்சியல் the burden they are uh, not only financial and other uh, the burden they are facing apart from that the subject is because of so much of uh, the stigma and discrimination so this is the main question most of the time we encounter in our clinical setting from the family member is this curable what do you mean by cure that we have to establish that we have to make we ensure that what is what is the cure we can expect from the treatment for schizophrenia so these are all the evidences so reduction in psychotic only attaining the, the symptomatic recovery is a 50% in cross sectional 25% in longitudinal normalization community integration it is possible in 40% and positive health and well being only 2% established in the cross sectional studies but in recent the long acting uh, the therapeutic models this uh, the normalization the community integration is much more when compared to this study i guess he will become normal that is another question they will ask normal i do not so what is normal that is so we do not know what is normal right one ko one normal a irukum enakku one normal a irukum ivan enna illness varadhukku munadi normal a irukana illa na normal a irukana nee so the normal has to be established normal na enna what they are expecting from the normal avanga avungaloda normal definition is completely different from what you think as a normal so ellathukku nalla pesanum ellathukku nalla palaganum ஒரு கல்யாணம் பண்ணி குடும்பத்தை நடத்தணும் ஒரு வேலைக்கு போகணும் இவ்வளவுதான் ஒரு மினிமம் எக்ஸ்பெக்டேஷன் இஸ் அ நார்மல் பர்சன் கேன் டூ திஸ் பர்டிகுலர் நார்மாலிட்டி வாட் தே ஆர் எக்ஸ்பெக்டிங் இஸ் அ நார்மல் ஹேஸ் டு பி எஸ்டாப்ளிஷ்ட் தென் யூ கேன் கிவ் அபவுட் தி வேரியஸ் ஃபேக்ட்ஸ் அபவுட் த நார்மாலிட்டி அஸ் ஃபார் அஸ் கேஸ் ஆஃப் இந்தியா கன்சிடர் ஹவு லாங் ஐ ஷுட் டேக் டேப்லெட்ஸ் தட் இஸ் தி அனதர் கொஸ்டின்ஸ் வி ஆல் வெரி நோ தட் கேஸ் ஆஃப் இந்தியா வி நீட் லாங் டேம் மெடிக்கேஷன் தட் ஹேஸ் டு பி ப்ராப்பர்லி அட்ரெஸ்ட் we will get married that is the another important question most of the time we encounter in a clinical setting as far as uh, the patient is very very young kalyana pannikalama sir that is the question they ask uh, my chief used to say in those uh, particular question so yethukravana irundha nee sonnalum yethupom sollanalum yethu அவன் ஏத்துக்க மாட்டான்ட்டு நீ போய் சொன்னாலும் ஏத்துக்க மாட்டான் சொல்லனாலும் ஏத்துக்க மாட்டான் லைக் வைஸ் பிலாசபிக்கலி டோல் பட் வில் ஹி கெட் மேரிட் எஸ் ஹி கேன் கெட் மேரிட் டிபெண்ட்ஸ் அப்பான் தி த வேரியஸ் ஃபேக்டர்ஸ் வெதர் ஐ ஆல்ரெடி புட் ஒன் ஸ்லைட் நோ ஹி கேன் பி நார்மலைஸ்ட் இன் ஃபார்ட்டி பர்சன்டேஜ் ஆஃப் அதர் கிராஸ் செக்ஷனல் ஸ்டடி த நார்மாலிட்டி கேன் பி எஸ்டாப்ளிஷ் ஸோ அலாங் ஸோ வேரியஸ் ஃபேக்டர்ஸ் ஹவு லாங் வி டை வென் வி டைக்னோஸ்ட் வாட் இஸ் தி ஏஜ் ஆஃப் ஆன்சைட் how regularly they are taking medication how yes 
essential to take the medication regularly. So in this aspect, he can he will be functioning well, he will be functioning adequately. In those situations, he can get married. So in that situation, we have to disclose the particular diagnosis to the opposite party. Then only they can have some consensus about all those things. Likewise, these are all the situations we have to go through. Is this heritable? So another important question, So schizophrenia, it is not a hereditary disease. Schizophrenia is a genetic disease. The genetic is completely different from hereditary. Hereditary means it is runs in the families. Genetic means it may run in the families, may not run in the family. For example, any uh, uh, the spontaneous mutation can happen during the pregnancy without any family history. That might be reason for schizophrenia, right? So this schizophrenia is completely a genetic disorder. This particular abnormal gene may be heritable or may not be heritable. We cannot say. But when compared to the normal population, the heritability, the chance is very high. Likewise, we have to establish he will be functional. It depends upon, again, various factors. How uh, regularly you are taking medication and uh, how uh, they can understand uh, about the illness and how uh, the support system. So there are many factors deciding about the uh, functional. 50% of caregiver of women with schizophrenia felt dissatisfied with the mental health service delivery, which may partly contribute to the lack of education about the illness. So we always tend to blame the patient as well as the family member for the poor compliance. So what are the limitations in our clinical settings? What are the limitations in our resources that we have to introspect? So most of the time, the family as well as the patient perspective about the schizophrenia is not routinely addressed in the clinical settings. That might be main reason for poor compliance. So I have a schizophrenia. I am not schizophrenia. I am not my mental illness. My illness is part of me. So you cannot say any person as a schizophrenia. So any individual, they are having the schizophrenia. But you cannot say that he is a schizophrenic patient, he is a bipolar patient, he is a OCD. That, that is not their identity. So this illness part of their uh, the identity rather than it is their original identity. Likewise, we have to approach a patient as well as the, the caregiver of the patient with schizophrenia. Then only in the routine clinical settings, all of these, uh, the genuine, uh, the concerns and fear and anxiety has to be addressed. Definitely, this will give the, uh, uh, this give a lot of uh, the trust about uh, the treatment, uh, uh, the treating fear towards the treating patient. That might be one of the reasons for good complaints about the case uh, Thank you. Thank you, Sir Balan, sir, for an excellent uh, coverage of the topic. Very unusual and uh, but very needed for the uh, practicing psychiatrist. All practical issues you have uh, highlighted very well. We'll go to Dr. Shamsundar. I think you can. Shamsundar, yes, sir. sir, ready? Yes, yeah. sir. You can start your talk. So today we are going to discuss uh, the art of choosing an anti-craving agent for alcohol. So before going into the topic, we know alcohol use disorder carry a high morbidity and mortality. And as per uh, National Mental Health Service and in India, 2015 to 16, the prevalence of disorder is found to be 4.6 usually among males, and usually in the age group of 40 to 49 years. And uh, it also brought to light the uh, uh, high treatment gap that is noted for these disorders, which is around eight. Um, and we know recovery is not just the patient stopping uh, alcohol use. Recovery also means an improved health, an improved personal and spiritual health, and uh, personal integrity, and a meaningful contribution to society. Um, using medications for alcohol use can uh, be required in the withdrawal for detoxification and uh, also for anti-craving purposes. 
But before going into the anti-craving agents, let us see a few more important points. So first of all, relapses in addictive disorders. We all know addiction itself is a chronic relapsing and remitting disease. And relapses uh, are occurs in a very high percentage in individuals with uh, addiction. And can occur even after prolonged abstinence periods. You'll be surprised when some patients say they were abstinent for so many years and later during some trigger, they restart drinking and go back to the previous drinking pattern. And relapse in addiction, in any addiction, not just alcohol, is often a rule than an exception. But what are the common reasons proposed for relapse? One is the drug euphoria. The patient has a memory of the drug inducing a great deal of euphoria for these individuals. And as a result, uh, they relapse to drinking to experience the same time. Sometimes they uh, have overlearning habits. They are... Uh, habit systems or habit networks in the brain are so strong that when there is a trigger, they immediately resort to drinking without thinking much about it, without thinking either about the drug euphoria or any other factors. They just go restart drinking uh, impulsively. This reflects strong habit formation, distorted learning and false prediction about their rewards. They may think the that reward from alcohol use is the one they need at the moment. So this leads to relapse. And another uh, proposed uh, mechanism is withdrawal escape. Many stop it, but they can't withstand the withdrawal symptoms. To relieve the unpleasant withdrawal effects, both physical and emotional, they keep drinking. The fourth main reason, which is often neglected, is the craving. Yeah. So, what is craving? So craving, uh, compared to other features of addiction like tolerance, withdrawal, craving is slightly tricky because craving is often a subjective uh, experience. And craving, it is defined as pathologically intense feelings of wanting, which can be produced with incentive salience. So when we are faced with a situation, what we want in the situation, what for, for which factor do we give maximum importance? It is called incentive craving. In simple English, it is called wanting. It may not be needing, it is just wanting. So this is translated into conscious awareness. So uh, in craving, what happens is there is over-attribution of incentive salience to drug-related stimulus. For example, we all remember the uh, experiment of Ivan Pavlo, wherein uh, initially a neutral stimulus, how it is uh, transformed into a condition stimulus. Anyway, in people who are exposed to alcohol for a longer period of time, their uh, neural systems undergo a lot of changes. This is called neuroadaptation. So this leads to them placing over attribution uh, to incentive salience to drug-related stimulus. They purposely, uh, their brain is forced to think uh, of relapse and they focus on drug-related stimulus. So they mistakenly the salience is attributed to incentive stimulus. And this excessive wanting, uh, even when excessive liking may not be there, they may not want the drug effects of euphoria. They may not want the relief from withdrawal, but still they may just want to take the substance. So more like the so this rational wanting will lead to irrational behavior, which will land them up in persistent and repetitive drug use despite the negative effects. On closer look at neurobiology of addiction, so this picture is taken from uh, ASAM textbook of uh, addiction. Uh, this is called Coop cycle of addiction. So wherein addiction occurs in three stages, binge intoxication stage, negative effect withdrawal stage, and preoccupation and anticipation stage. We'll start with the binge intoxication stage. The person has placed an excessive salience on unwanted stimulus but with that, that provokes drinking. So the, the person takes alcohol. This is binge intoxication. The brain regions uh, involved are basal ganglia and nucleus accumbens. So once binge intoxication happens, after, after some point of time, when the patient is not taking the drug, they have been in the physical stage. The, the, the dual, sorry, extended amygdala and habenula. Uh, this results in a reduced dopaminergic uh, surge and reduced GABA. So, leave the more the stage called preoccupation and anticipation stage. The person starts anticipating when they can have their next drink. And it does not get to their activity. 
we have preoccupied with the senses. This leads to a few factors like poor decision making, greater uh, salience of uh, stimuli, and compulsive drug use, and also self control. The neural substrate involved in this is prefrontal cortex. So basically, the person has executive function deficits, which lead on to them going into relapse again. So individuals with addiction, uh, they undergo progressive structural and functional disruptions. So what are the psychological processes affected? One is the reward and motivation. For, for They may neglect the natural rewards and they may place more importance on the reward produced by substances. And they their motivational system may be more inclined towards obtaining the reward through substances. And emotional regulation, they, uh, even at the slightest emotional provocation, they go back to alcohol use. Inhibitory control, they are not able to uh, control the urge. They are not able to control their uh, motor activity. This leads on to poor decision making and loss of control and and also the self-awareness another uh, psychological factor that is affected. And it is important to know, although these three may appear different, different things, like the binge intoxication, insight to salience, reward system, or the executive function system, although all these three appears to be different, different circuits, these brain networks interact with each other. When one is triggered, suddenly all the other systems are also triggered and lands the patient in relapses. So in the, the main challenge for the clinician is to prevent the relapse. So what do we expect? Many a times, uh, not just psychiatrists, also other clinicians, we are forced to think abstinence is the only goal. It is the ultimate goal. This is due to a moral lens from which we see alcohol use. Any amount of alcohol use we think is bad. While this is uh, medically true, we need to understand that sometimes abstinence is not the goal of the patient. And many a times, initially the patient may be very reluctant to change. But once he comes into the system, gradually his uh, preferences evolve over time. So we should not lose heart when patient says, I don't want to stop talking, but I want to reduce drinking. So any change from the patient's end is an acceptable one. So the following are the preferred outcomes I mentioned in the slide. One is increased abstinence rate, which is what we prefer. The other preferred outcomes are reduction in frequency or volume of alcohol use, moderation of alcohol use, controlled drinking, non-abstinent remission, which means that the person is, uh, has stopped alcohol almost completely, but he drinks once in a few days uh, one, uh, or on occasions, but he no longer meets the criteria for alcohol dependence. This is called non-abstinent remission. Reduction in number of drinking days is another outcome we prefer. Reduction in number of heavy drinking days, reduction in subjective experience of craving, and increased time to return to the next drink or uh, relapse. So this is what, these are all the preferred outcomes that can be in in case of uh, uh, alcohol dependence syndrome and not just abstinence. So we have a lot of drugs uh, in the armament area to help in um, promoting ab uh, abstinence and to help in preventing the relapse. But we need to find, just like uh, the lot of weapons shown in this uh, photograph, each uh, weapon has their own skills. They shoot to a particular uh, distance, they have their own advantages, disadvantages. You have to, if you, if you want to shoot different, different things, you have to choose different, different weapons. Similarly, different, different drugs have different uh, mechanisms and they have their own advantages, disadvantages. We need to know about them so that to, uh, we, we'll be able to choose the right thing for the right patient. So, uh, this provides the, this slide provides a, a snapshot of available anti craving agents. Uh, on the left, we have naltrexone and acamprosate. Uh, they are in bold and they are in the um, maximum font size because they are the most evidence available for only these two medications. We also have topiramate, gabapentin, and baclofen in the on the left box. So these are the commonly used medications for uh, alcohol anti craving purpose. On the right, we have arnicline. Aripiprazole, zonisamide, ondansetron, dalmifin, and antidepressants. We'll see about these agents because they have mixed evidence. Diselfiram, we should know, it is a deterrent agent. It, is, it has no anti-craving properties. Hence, uh, in this uh, lecture, I'm not covering diselfiram. 
So coming to anti-craving agents, they are indicated in moderate to severe alcohol dependency. Mild alcohol dependence syndrome or harmful use of alcohol generally requires uh, just non-pharmacological management or brief interventions. So uh, they should be used when patient prefers pharmacological treatment, when there is no contraindications for their use, uh, when the non-pharmacological interventions have failed. So in all these situations, we can use anti-craving agents. And use of anti-craving agents is called medication-assisted treatment of alcohol use. And before starting treatment, it is uh, this point is very important. The clinician and the client has to agree to a mutual initial treatment goal. So initial treatment goal is the goal you are setting uh, on the first visit. This goal can be anything among the things that I have showed in the previous slide. So it could be abstinence, it could be reduction in frequency of alcohol use or volume of alcohol use or controlled drinking, decrease in heavy drinking, whatever the patient wants. So we need not be hesitant about fixing this initial treatment goal. Even if the patient says, I want to continue drinking, just give me some medication so that uh, uh, my, my appetite might increase or so that my uh, quantity of use comes down. We should not be hesitant in saying, no, no, I'll treat only you for abstinence. We need not force that. However, when the same patient comes back, we can slightly use motivational interviewing techniques and other techniques to change their initial treatment goal towards abstinence. Uh, so that conversation can take place uh, in a gradual manner. So once the mutual initial treatment goal is set, then we can initiate give them the option of anti-craving agents. So uh, anti-craving agents, we may be hesitant in some situations whether these uh, drugs may do any harm to the patient. But based on the available evidence, it is very clear that the benefits outweigh the risks of continued drinking. So let's go one by one into each anti-craving agent. Uh, so naltrexone, it is one of the first line agents for uh, alcohol dependence syndrome. The mechanism is it's a non-selective opioid receptor antagonist with maximum efficacy at maximum affinity for mu receptors than delta and kappa receptors. It's available as tablets and long-acting injectable. Uh, however, the long-acting injectable is not available in India. Tablets is available as 50 FG. So, I prefer naltrexone. Uh, naltrexone is generally preferred because it acts on opioid. Uh, this opioid system, uh, there are two neurotransmitters that uh, get immediately released in the brain following alcohol use. One is the dopamine, one is uh, beta endorphins. So the endogenous opioids that are really during, uh, that, that provide pleasure, that is blocked by naltrexone. So if in patients with high intense craving component, especially we talk about two types of craving. One is the reward related craving. The craving wherein the person thinks, I will get a reward by drinking. The other one is relief-related craving. In, in people with anxiety, they want to relieve the stress. So this is relief-related craving. For reward-related craving, positive reward effects, naltrexone is preferred. And it is also preferred when uh, there is family history of alcohol use, uh, comorbid gambling disorder. Um, and in patients with frequent relapses, we can prefer naltrexone. And uh, one study has also proved that smokers with alcohol use disorder, naltrexone might work better than other drugs. So uh, the last point says comorbid opioid use disorder. This uh, is a bit tricky. If we want to use uh, opioid agonist treatment like methadone or buprenorphine, then naltrexone may not be preferred. However, if we want to give an antagonist management for uh, opioid use disorder, then naltrexone you can prefer. So all these are based on the studies mentioned on the left, uh, on the right. And what are the outcomes I can expect once I start the patient on naltrexone? One is reduced return to drinking, reduced relapsed attendance pattern, decreased craving, and reduced return to heavy drinking. Uh, it can be used when the goal is both abstinence or goal is reduction, you can use naltrexone. And it may be administered when client is still drinking. This is unique to naltrexone because other drugs like acamprosate, baclofen, etc., are not generally recommended when patient is still drinking. So when the patient himself says, I'm going, still going to drink, just give me, just reduce my drinking, then you can always prefer naltrexone. And uh, based on, when, when we come to the evidence, combined trial in USA uh, had reported that naltrexone had better outcomes than However, the predict trial in Germany uh, found no significant difference between the two in terms of efficacy. In 2014 meta-analysis, no significant difference has been found between a composite and alcohol. Uh, 
in the factors of return to drinking or heavy drinking or number of drinkings. One more uh, unique feature of naltrexone is it is preferred when patient has comorbid depression and PTSD when it is used along with an antidepressant. This property uh, does not hold good for other anti-craving agents. So uh, all these factors, naltrexone may be preferred to other anti-craving agents. How, what are the side effects? GI discomfort is a common side effect, nausea, dyspepsia, etc. And elevation in uh, liver function test. These are the common side effects. And caution has to be used because in pain syndromes, the patient may uh, be already taking an opioid or the patient may require opioids in the future. So, but naltrexone uh, may block the opioid receptors and opioids may not be useful. So, in pain syndromes, it has to be, it, it can be avoided or it can be used with caution. When patient is planned for any surgeries because the anesthetic drugs, uh, opioids are commonly used anesthetic drugs. So, in planned surgery, you can avoid it. And patients with opioid use disorder, if you prefer an agonist management, you can avoid naltrexone. And patients with acute hepatitis, naltrexone is better avoided. And patients with hepatitis C, hepatitis B, HIV patients, uh, because it uh, increases their LFTs, increases the liver enzymes, then it, uh, so it is uh, generally avoided. Acamprosate. So coming to the next most preferred agent, uh, acamprosate, it is also a first line agent in treatment of alcohol use disorder. Uh, the mechanism of action is it beneficially modulates the glutamatergic neurotransmitter system, including the uh, metabotropic glutamate receptor 5. So this uh, effect on this glutamatergic system will indirectly affect the other neurotransmitter systems and ion channels. This leads to a uh, GABA glutamate imbalance get uh, counteracted and the balance is restored. Formulation available as tablets of 333 mg. And the uh, preferred dose is 1,998 mg, which means six tablets has to be taken <coughs> by the patient. So uh, it is a safe medication and does not have any major drug interactions. So it may be preferred in uh, old age people who, have, who generally have polypharmacy, there is risk of interaction. And if the patient is already on opioid medications, it may be preferred. And uh, if the patient has multiple medical issues, a couple of things, one, medi one medication that does not affect the liver. It also does not affect the heart. So in patients with these ailments, it may be preferred. And uh, there is no risk of overdose. And it, it, it may be most effective when uh, the patient is abstinent at the time of treatment initiation. Often, acamprosate is started on day five of abstinence. And uh, after the cerebral symptoms have settled down. And it is the patient is motivated to maintain abstinence. Whereas in naltrexone, we saw whether it is abstinence or reduction, it is useful, but acamprosate only when the patient wants to maintain abstinence, it is useful. Uh, and it reduces the negative affective state after the withdrawal. Once the withdrawal symptoms settle down, the uh, long term alcohol use produces a negative state. This negative state occurs due to uh, GABA glutamate imbalance. This leads to a lot of anxiety, stress, etc. So, to relieve this, this kind of a craving, relief craving, acamprosate may be preferred. So what are the outcomes I can expect once I start to return to drinking, decrease the number of drinking days. And uh, it does not have much effect on heavy drinking days. So in patients with binge drinking, naltrexone may be preferred uh, than acamprosate. And the evidence is both predict and combined trials have established that it is, epic, it is effective in uh, controlling craving and it, uh, to improve the alcohol uh, use disorder outcomes. And side effects are Transient diarrhea, platulence, these are the common side effects which are generally settled down in the initial few weeks. Uh, very rarely it can worsen depression and it can cause suicidality. So when you start, you need to check with the patient whether they have any worsening of depression or suicidality. Uh, only caution is because it's eliminated by kidneys. Uh, in renal impairment, you may either avoid it or you may uh, dose it slightly lesser. So that's about acamprosite. And topiramate, uh, if patient does not respond to acaprosate and alfexone, the two preferred agents are topiramate and carbapate. Coming to topiramate, the mechanism of action, it has multiple mechanisms of action. It facilitates GABA transmission. It inhibits glutamate transmission. It mediates the voltage gated uh, sodium and potassium current. Uh, so it has uh, action on multiple neurotransmitter systems. It is available as tablets. And uh, compared to acamprosate and naltrexone, 
Naltrexone is quite costly. One tablet might cost around 80 rupees. And Acamprosate, we have to use six tablets per day, somewhere around 20 rupees. So, when it's cheaper than this medication, that may cost uh, of 25 TMG, may cost just five or six rupees. Um, so, the principle is 200 to 300 mg, but it has to be updated very slowly because of uh, every week we can increase by 25 to 50 mg and we can reach a 200 mg we have to reach. Uh, it also has good outcomes like reduction in heavy drinking days, reduction in number of drinks per day, the, the experience may be relieved, and increased abstinence rates. There are uh, no robust uh, angle closure glaucoma. So all this we need to rule out. So this is a side effect of topramate can also be utilized for individuals with obesity. So it may be preferred for people with obesity. And because topramate uh, is an agent used in migraine and seizure disorder and all. In patients with multiple uh, seizures and in patients with uh, uh, migraine, it may be preferred. Next is gabapentin. The mechanism of action is uh, it, it acts on the presynaptic voltage gated calcium channels. And through this, it indirectly modulates the GABA neurotransmission. It is available as tablets. The dosages are uh, 900 to 1800 mg. And the outcomes uh, when I give gabapentin, I can expect reduction in heavy drinking days, reduction in the drinking frequency, reduction in craving, and increased abstinence rate. The side effects include there is a possibility of misuse with the gabapentin. Uh, patients can uh, force the prescriptions, patients can uh, develop withdrawal symptoms, tolerance, etc., when they are on gabapentin. So it has to be used with caution. Um, and gabapentin can also uh, produce. Uh, orthostatic hypotension. So it may not be preferred in elderly individuals. One caution uh, is renal disease, where the doses need to be down titrated. It is eliminated by kidneys. It may be preferred if patient has peripheral neuropathy, pain syndromes, when gabapentin is an indication, then it, it, you can prefer it. So these four are the major medications used for uh, useless anti-craving agents. Acamprosin, naltrexone, dopamate, and gabapentin. All the other agents, as per the latest guidelines, 2023 guidelines. Uh, so all this data I had taken from uh, three important guidelines. One is the American Psychiatry Association guidelines, Canadian guidelines, and the UK guidelines. So all these guidelines, they place these four drugs uh, in the uh, main as the mainstay of alcohol withdrawal of, of alcohol uh, craving management, and the upcoming medications, uh, baclofen and we'll see aside, aside about other medications. These have to be used only when all the other options fail. So let's come to baclofen. So baclofen, uh, the mechanism of action is it is a GABA B receptor agonist. It restores the neurotransmitter balance uh, in, with long-term alcohol use. It is available as uh, tablets and capsules. The dosages uh, that are effective are from 40 mg to 180 mg, although doses up to 120 mg are there in the literature. Uh, efficacy, Previous studies had uh, mentioned some benefit. However, the most recent RCTs, they, 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 they report no significant benefit of uh, baclofen. Side effects, they, it has abuse potential, it has dependence potential, etc. And uh, caution has to be exercised in patients with history of seizures, psychosis, bipolar disorder, as it can worsen all these disorders. It can reduce the seizure threshold. Uh, and abrupt stopping of uh, baclofen can often lead to CNS symptoms like confusion, um, cognitive uh, disturbances, memory disturbances, etc. And it can also produce uh, withdrawal-like features. So abrupt stopping of uh, baclofen is not recommended. So this is a unique feature for baclofen, uh, not there in, not present in other medications. So it has to be used with caution and patient has to be advised that abrupt stopping should not be attempted. Uh, we should not use if baclofen if the patient is continuing to drink because it's a GABA B receptor agonist. It can worsen when the patient uh, the patient's imbalance and other things. It can increase the risk of falls, etc. So it has to be used with uh, caution. If patient is still drinking, don't use it. Uh, and previous uh, 
previously some recommendations uh, were made for use of baclofen as a uh, detoxification agent. So the recent guidelines discourage the use of uh, baclofen as a detoxification agent. It should not be used during withdrawal. Uh, so the bottom line is baclofen is has a limited benefit. It has to be considered only if acamprosate or naltrexone are failed or it is contraindicated. So coming to the other drugs, uh, conventionally uh, antidepressants all, were also thought to have some efficacy with uh, craving, but the recent uh, evidence suggests that it, they have no efficacy in reducing craving. They may be used if the patient has comorbid anxiety or depression. Some other medications with uh, anti-craving activity are aripiprazole. Uh, so if alcohol use disorder with some indication for aripiprazole is there, then it can be used. For example, psychosis or uh, low dose aripiprazole for OCD, etc. Varniclin, it may be a promising agent. Many trials have uh, uh, proven benefit for uh, reducing both nicotine and alcohol dependence. So it may be worthwhile in patients with uh, nicotine dependence. Uh, drugs like zonisamide, ontan, cetron have limited evidence. Uh, one more recent drug is nalmefine, which is available only in Europe as of now. It is a mu delta antagonist and kappa partial agonist. One peculiar nature of this drug is that it is useful in mild dependence, not whereas other anti-craving agents we think of only in moderate to severe dependence. But so far, nalmefine can be used in mild dependence in combination with psychosocial interventions. So now, uh, this is a small exercise. Uh, I will tell a few points. You can put in the chat box which anti-craving agent you would prefer. When the goal is just reduction. You can put in the chat box. When there is family history of ADS. When the patient prefers once daily dosing, they don't want to take three times a day. I mistakenly revealed the answer. When the patient finds alcohol highly rewarding or naltrexone highly rewarding. So, when patient prefers alcohol uh, highly rewarding and when patient has frequent relapses, smoker with ADS, answer is naltrexone. Almost all of you have got it right. So, next When the patient needs less drug interactions, there is active liver disease, patient is already on opioids, multiple medical issues, motivated to maintain abstinence, then acamprosate could be the agent we, uh, we should be looking at. Smoker, yes, uh, Dr. Dajalakshmi, madam, has told uh, Varniclin. Yes, Varniclin also can be preferred, but among the available agents, initially, naltrexone can be preferred. So when patient has comorbid obesity, comorbid migraine or any headache syndrome. Yes. When the patient is not improving with acamprosate or naltrexone or when the patient needs a slightly cost-effective agent, we can't spend much, that topramate is preferred. Topramate is preferred. Right. When the patient has comorbid peripheral neuropathy, did not respond to acamprosate or naltrexone, then Gabapentin also can be preferred. So, let me tell you a few take-home points before uh, I end the session. So, the very first thing is craving is a major reason for relapse, but it is often neglected. Often we think patient finds it very rewarding, that's why they are keeping on drinking. But craving is craving is uh, something like a uh, irrational. Irrationally, the mind is attributing a lot of importance to drinking-related cues. That is craving. So that is the main reason. And medication-assisted management has more advantages than only non-pharmacological management. Acamprosate and naltrexone have the most evidence. So if, whenever possible, we have to try these two medications first. When these two medications fail, gabapentin or topiramate have to be preferred. And at last, if the patient does not respond, then baclofen and other agents can be given a try. So we need to consider clinical factors, preferred outcomes while choosing the agent. 
and also other factors like cost factors, patient related factors, etc. So all these multiple options uh, have to be uh, given to the patient and can be tried sequentially. Thank you very much for your time. These are my references. If you have any queries, you can write to me at this. Thanks everyone for patient listening. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sam Sundar. Very lucid presentation, very practical point. And the way you ended it is actually take home points and the, the exercise also. Um, oh, yeah. uh, many questions for Dr. So, Balm, sir. So, they're asking uh, what if a family is illiterate and what if they are doing an internet search and then for diagnosis and management. Dr. Sam Sundar, how long do you have to give the anti craving agent? When we can expect a patient's benefit, when, they, when we can expect the patient have uh, benefit on giving this anti craving agent? Sir, uh, for that also, uh, the thing is, uh, they have given uh, some six or seven factors. Sir. So these factors include uh, uh, what is the maximum period of abstinence with the medication that this person has uh, um, achieved so far. And it has to be at least nine months to one year of abstinence. Then we can think of uh, tapering them. And if the whether the patient uh, themselves ask for... Uh, some patients, they are okay with continuing the anti-craving agents because the cost of a relapse may be very high for these patients. So uh, how bad are the relapses? How bad are uh, the complications that the patient had? So for patients like um, uh, patients who have liver disease, patients who have uh, significant medical issues, then we prefer to continue it slightly for a longer time because if they relapse, then the medical issues are going to be much more. Uh, so it has to be tailor-made for the patient needs is what they say, sir. So it depends on the uh, past relapses, how severe they are. Depends on that, sir. How many days we have to wait whether the drug is effective in the patients or not? How long you can, for example, you give naltrexone or we start acabrosite and uh, we are prescribing the patient, giving to the patients. How long can wait the pay, the pay, the drug is very effective or not? So these guidelines mentioned somewhere around two months, sir. Around a period of two months, we can wait. And one more thing I, I forgot to mention, sir. Some people also talk about combination of anti-craving agents, like acamprosate naltrexone is one combination that has been studied. Uh, however, the efficacy over using individual drugs is limited. Uh, that Sobal has one more question. That sir, I sir, Family... sir uh, I, I, I got one question from Karthik Daivanayagam. Yes. Sir, uh, regarding the role of family federation or family support groups in comprehensive care of uh, F20 patients, Yet, definitely there will be a great uh, role the family has to play as far as the schizophrenia is concerned because uh, it is not only a symptomatic uh, recovery, it is uh, functional recovery and there are so much of community integration also it is being needed for schizophrenia. Definitely there is a role for family member. And another thing is the import, impact of stigma is less and understanding is better among patient and family from low socioeconomic status. This is very, very uh, the true statement. That is why I am saying that when I go to the rural area, they are doing all this, uh, the pay order, the possession attack. So they are happening in front of the village only, right? They, they are uh, very uh, uh, ready to come to the clinic attention if there is any uh, the mental illness. Definitely in so lower socioeconomic status, the stigma is very less compared to the, uh, the other groups. The impact of medical treatment of schizophrenia on homelessness, see, the medical treatment we are aiming to the only a symptomatic recovery. So that is not a comprehensive uh, treatment. The social integration, the normality and living with the positive mental health, these are all the target. This cannot be achieved only with the medical treatment. So there are so much of comprehensive treatment model is necessary for uh, treating schizophrenia. Yeah. 
previous question sir uh, how will you address so, another uh, question is most of the patient uh, family member or illiterate in this situation how can we communicate to family member in a scientific way it is not uh, explaining everything in a dopamine uh, uh, the positive the misophonin weaker so likewise there is no need to use all the scientific uh, the terminologies scientific way means what is this illness what uh, the impact of uh, this illness to the individual to the family Uh, to the functioning to the cognition to the, uh, the so likewise we have to explain what is the course and prognosis what are all the treatment uh, options so what are all the pros and cons so everything you have to explain in a more scientific way most of the time we are not giving all the explanation in scientific way the personal bias has been expressed in the clinical settings so ipdi irundha seriya poidum apdi irundha seriya poru likewise we are giving so much of hope so in a scientific means you are telling the facts what are the facts about the illness that has to be disclosed whether they are accepting or not whether they are uh, uh, believing or not you have to tell all the facts in a language that is easily understandable to the person adha illiterate na edhum purinjikka mattaangala kedaiyadhu nammala kuda avanga da purinjikkranga so like karthik told they are having very much understanding about the illness when compared to the literate so definitely they are very ready to come to the treatment they are ready to take the treatment also so illiterate means definitely they will be knowledgeable but the thing is you have to use a language that can be understandable to them that is very essential for any other question sir they have asked about internet use users how will you tackle internet use internet eh? internet uh, information pathi kekkranga sir for any illness uh, patient family members used to search um, the internet uh, so that that is happening in uh, that is happening in any illness sir but as far as the schizophrenia is concerned googling is very less when compared to the other psychiatric illness for example anxiety disorder depression ocd, OCD narcissistic yeah. borderline personality disorder attention deficit so in this situation only they will google and come but as far as schizophrenia is concerned the lack of awareness the main issues on other things there will be overwhelming of information is available but schizophrenia there will be a lack of information that is the main issue so that these internet and googling is not to produce much impact on schizophrenia treatment i guess sir how will you actually uh, address the sexual dysfunction perspective Uh, from the patient side as well as family side when they are so most of the time what we think sex is a luxury so my friend is a nephrologist he used to say that uh, the patient with the hemodialysis when they says that i am having erection the doctor used to ask idukapra erection vandha enna varlana enna like that they would ask you are in a hemodialysis you are in a chronic renal failure why you are bothering about sex like that we think that sex is a luxury so sex is a part of normal function likewise we have to see so definitely this particular sexual dysfunction may have greater impact as far as case of nine concern both patient as well as the spouses so in this aspect we can address all these concerns so first we have to produce some space to discuss about all those things nareya nadal that is why the patient is saying that most of the time psychiatrists they are not talking about the illness they are not listening about the patient concern they are not listening about these are all these so idella thevaya like that they are having some approaches that is why they are very much assistant to discuss about all those things so you have to provide a space so in the space the patient is having so much of trust so then they will disclose everything then they disclose all of the concerns and fears yes sir any other questions they they have asked about any yeah. uh, injectables for uh, prevent, preventing relapse in ads sir dr shashundha there's one question called any liquid formulation of anti craving agent it has been used to be available as a liquid uh, sir but it is not uh, very easy uh, like uh, availability is less Cannabidiol recently the drug cannabidiol was in widely marketed for substance use. What's your uh, comment? Sir, I have. Uh, it's available in liquid form. <laughs> cannabidiol. But I don't know about its efficacy in alcohol dependence. Not read much about it. Regarding alcohol use. 
regarding yes. uh, I am not very sure, sir. Okay. So can be there. So, but I would like to answer the previous question. Uh, one is uh, any preference for anti craving agent in anxiety? As per the literature, uh, it, it says either a compression naltrexone with an SSRI. However, uh, clinically speaking, baclofen can be tried in these individuals because GABA B uh, action is linked with uh, reducing anxiety. So, uh, Dr. Ashwati Nair's question, uh, baclofen is an agent that we can consider. And uh, any injectables for preventing relapses? Actually, naltrexone injection, we need to know about it. We don't know when it is going to come. So, naltrexone 380 mg injection is available in uh, US and other countries and, and few more countries. It is 380 mg once monthly injection. It comes with one uh, powder, uh, uh, diluent, and four needles, four different size needles. So we, we, we have to mix the powder, uh, the element and the powder. We have to uh, prevent clogging. It, it, can, it can easily become clogged. It can, it, it can easily get formed. We have, we have to shake vigorously. And we have to, there are four needles available. Uh, so whichever uh, of, of different width, we have to choose whichever needle. And if one needle gets clogged, we have to take the bigger needle and, and try. But the, it is very effective. It is equally effective as... Uh, Naltrexone oral medication. Uh, however, the only thing is, uh, if as I already mentioned, it, it, it can the it can get clogged and all that. So uh, the injection related side effects are more. There have been reports wherein uh, it had gone to uh, gluteal uh, necrosis and other kind of uh, issues. But it, it it may very very soon come to our country also. So as of now, no. But in future it can come. But we used to have something called naltrexone implant that can be implanted in the subcutaneous uh, tissue. But uh, the, the, the efficacy is not as good as oral naltrexone. So that is uh, the answer to uh, Dr. Sanjay Pandian's question. And uh, one more, uh, they asked, patient is unwilling and drinking themselves to death, non-compliant. Patient family seems helpless. In this situation, naltrexone can be safely given. They can give naltrexone before the patient uh, patients drink, either in a, uh, a surreptitious way, they can give naltrexone. In, and it had actually worked wonders in many uh, of uh, the patient we had seen. Um, it, it, it at least reduces their quantity of uh, alcohol use. The thing to avoid is baclofen. Uh, disulfiram many times they give without the patient's consent. Uh, so this to be avoided it can give naltrexone in that scenario. A few points mm -hmm. about uh, combining um, uh, anti-craving and uh, disulfiram. Yeah. So, uh, generally, uh, when patient is very highly motivated and pay, when such uh, diselfiram, yeah, one is deterrent agent, we generally say, because it deters, and also it increases the motivation. So, if, if, the, if the patient themselves are willing and they'll be, they, they want to go for this option, then we can definitely give a try. Diselfiram also, because it's anti-craving agent, I have not told about the efficacy. Uh, but it is uh, very highly efficacious when uh, we choose the right client. Uh, if they also want abstinence only, then it is very highly efficacious. The effect size is almost equal to a composite and naltrexone. And uh, seeing from a cost point of view also, it is uh, cost effective also, sir. So definitely we can prefer, we can give the option to the client. If the client wants it, then we can prefer, sir, definitely. So you can combine the naltrex naltrexone and disulfur because it induces acosis. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Usually, it induces psychosis there. Yes. Generally, sir. we yes, never combine naltrexone and disulfide. Yes, I've seen a few quite number of cases who were combined in the initial stage. Uh, most of them they developed psychosis, so we stopped it. Combine this both the drug. Sir, balance sir, your concluding remarks. Sir, sir, balance sir. Yes, sir. I can conclude, sir. Sir, balance. I wanted to say something. So, Balan, you can say a few words and conclude. Yes. So, regarding the schizophrenia is concerned, so more than phenomenological and clinical point of view, we are always ready to have uh, uh, the concern about the patient as well as the family members' perspective about the illness. They are having different understanding. They are having different perspective. They are having different expectation. All of this can be addressed in our uh, the clinical situation. 
then only we can give the comprehensive and holistic uh, the care for uh, patient is given thank you sir and we have uh, uh, professor dr arul tarunan sir uh, here and uh, sir you want to say some uh, uh, your, your opinions and then we can give vote of thanks also as a cabinet sir. arul tarunan thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you sir ஒண்ணு சார் நல்லா எக்ஸலண்டா பண்ணிட்டு இருந்தாங்க மை விஷஸ் டு போத் ஸ்பீக்கர்ஸ் அண்ட் சாரி ஐ ஜாயின் பட் லேட் எஸ்பெஷலி ட்ரீட்மெண்ட் சேலஞ்சஸ் வித் ஆல்கஹால் டிபெண்டன்ஸ் இது ஒரு எண்டில் இருக்கு அண்ட் ஃபேமிலி இன்டர்வென்ஷன்ஸ் ஃபார் ஸ்கிட்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஃப்ரீனியா Uh, these two are areas which uh, generally are neglected in the sense that you know uh, even in an institutional setup we find that you know difficulties occur uh, we are more comfortable with uh, uh, giving the patients uh, psychopharmacological treatment when it comes to uh, uh, social interventions or family interventions we are lagging behind in that and uh, uh even in uh, psycho uh, pharmacological interventions when it comes to uh managing the craving aspect of uh, the patient especially when the patient is that uh, discharged and he goes back to his own milieu there are quite a lot of challenges that occur uh, at that period of time is what uh, both the patient as well as the family members uh, require help or request help rather uh, from us so that the uh, whatever period of abstinence that has been gained during the uh, inpatient uh, care given can be maintained for a longer period of time probably i think that is where we uh, uh, sometimes fail and then you know things uh, take a down turn of course patients with motivation are uh, on a different pedestal but uh, patients where there are uh, you know other factors that come into play Uh, which tend to tip the balance one needs to be very uh, vigilant about this and uh, uh, cost factor is there but uh, uh, thankfully now uh, things are a little better so uh, we should choose an anti craving agent uh, and uh, should be able to use them uh, beneficially that should also be an important uh, uh, weapon in our armament area thank you sir thank you for this uh, Uh, surprise invitation and uh, thanks again sir thank you very much the panisel sir shall we conclude the session sir ah yes sir uh, very thank good you. presentation dr zobalan and uh, dr shamchunder on behalf of tnips i thank the chairperson dr neelagandan and both the speakers and all the members who have actively participated in this webinar uh, thank you very much we meet you all in the next energy webinar thank you sir thank you all good night